Hello everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of Ask Mo. Uh, my name is Mo and I'm a lawyer licensed to practice law in the province of Ontario and also in Nigeria. I create content for internationally trained lawyers who are looking to requalify in Canada. I create content for graduate students and I also create content for people who are looking to settle down in Canada and also succeed in Canada. Please note that whatever I say in this video or whatever myself and my guests, whatever we say in this video is not legal advice. Today I have a very special guest with me. She's not new to this channel. Her name is Mrs. Oduwale. She's a partner at Top Market, and today we are going to be talking about the different um, ways you can immigrate to Canada. So I had um, people send me questions and people have sent me, you know, so many questions. Unfortunately, we'll not be able to answer all the questions. We'll just take some of them, but, um, you know, we'll just be talking about um, express entry, how you can immigrate to Canada, and just the different um, methods um, behind it. So I'm going to start by um asking the first question and then we can you know just start the conversation from there so the first question that came in was um can i apply for express entry as a federal skilled worker while i'm a student either in canada or in any other country especially when my visitor's visa has been rejected before so that's so, a good question okay so that's a loaded question thank you Mo. <laughs> so that's a loaded question so let me start um from the last part that okay. if you've been refused a visitor's visa let's assume you're in your own country can you apply for express entry or any immigration platform to come into canada i'll say yes okay um i'm a good example of that um i remember sometime in 2006 or so i applied for visitor's visa with my son mm -hmm. and the application was rejected in fact i was just telling more about it um, the, the thing for me, then I was lecturing at the Nigerian law school. Mm -hmm. So when I got the rejection letter, they just ticked, oh, um, lack of authentic documents would not return at the end of. And I said, oh my God, what do you mean? Lack of authentic documents. And in those days, they return your package back to you. Mm -hmm. My bank statement in those days, there's those bank statements you tear off the edges, you know, the bulky paper ones. And it was not even opened. I was just wondering, I work at the Nigerian law school, I'm a public servant, you know, my son's school has letters, so what is not authentic about this? You know what I did? I wrote to Canadian immigration immediately. That's a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, have the, I have the letter with me. I wrote to them, I said, look, this is a prerogative of your embassy to decide who you want. I love Canada, I want to come to Canada, but believe you me, I take an objection for you saying, so I said, what you mean is that my document is fraudulent, you know, I said, well, I'm a lawyer, I'm a noble person, I teach people to be, you know, so I said, la, 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 la. I sent two full pages of that, and they now responded and say, oh, I can reapply if I want and all that, so it is not a barrier that you've been, but the most important thing is just that when you're filling the form, mm -hmm. you ensure you mark on it that um, you've been refused visa before, so that should not the by person and the other question is um if you're currently in canada maybe studying can you or in another country studying can you apply for express entry the answer is yes the most important thing is that from any country you're applying for you must have status to stay there mm. so or you must have status to stay in that country so if you're studying that means you have status to stay in the country mm -hmm. so let's assume for instance um your last guest that you had and when you were talking about the difference between graduate school and university, I really love that. And I had my children sit down and watch that. So and I sent it to a lot of people. You know, there are a lot of information people don't know. You know, I really loved it. I God knows how many times I've seen the video. So, so for someone like her, being in the U.S., as you mean after a program in the U.S., you know, while she's doing her program, she's already had a first degree in Nigeria. Assuming she had worked for some time in Nigeria. So while in the US, she could actually apply for PR in Canada. That was exactly so, what she did. Exactly. So someone in Canada to, who is a student. So you can imagine maybe um, a professional who had worked for years and have experience and came to Canada maybe for a postgraduate diploma and you already meet all the criteria. You could as well apply for express entry even though you are a student and um, you will still get the application. So being a student does not deny a person from immigrating in any way, really, and um, having a prior refusal, even having a prior bar. Sometimes people are bar for different reasons, maybe misrepresentations or things like that. Even having a prior bar does not mean you would not be admitted to Canada. Even being deported does not mean you'll be back. It's just that there are procedure you have to follow you know, we have what we call authority to return. So you need to do that before you can apply for visa to come to Canada. So you see, one thing with the immigration system that I usually tell people is not punitive. 
immigration system is not punitive. The country just wants to protect their integrity, protect their citizens. So that is it. So when it comes to integrity, if you feel firm, make sure you are consistent. Sometimes people don't intend to lie, but they are not deliberate in filling the form. Oh, when did I start work? Maybe it's May 2014. When you are filling another form, you say, oh, maybe it's June 2014. To immigration authority, that's misrepresentation. You know, so you have to be deliberate when you do these things. You take your time and be consistent with information. If you've been refused a visa before, it doesn't mean you would be, um, you would not be given the visa, even if you've been received, denied Canadian visa before. So TKS have been refused. You know, some will say, oh, don't worry, they don't know. U.S. don't share information with you. Today. You know, but you should just, if that immigration is not punitive, right? And so make sure you are forthright. There's always a way. The system forgives. They just want you to be sincere. I've lied before. I've done this wrong before. I'm a rehabilitated person, you know? So that's the thing with um, immigration. And that's a very important point that you, yeah. you, that you made about people wanting to lie or not even deliberately lying, but just yeah. representing things and just being careless sometimes with the way they yeah. forms and all of that. And they think the system is out to get them, but I like <laughs> that. The immigration is not punitive. Okay, so I want us to briefly talk about um, some, some of the um, different ways people can immigrate to Canada and they lot. So obviously, and this is just, you know what, like a 10 minute interview, we cannot exhaust everything, but just the different um, ways, especially I'm um, focusing on the most popular one, which is express entry. Everybody knows express entry. And sometimes people even confuse um, the Canadian experience class express entry with the skilled, um, the yeah. federal skilled um, yeah. worker class and people just mumble everything up together. So I just want us, want you to, Please give us a little bit of clarity about um, some of this, um, the different um, pathways to immigration. So, okay, so there I would, I would end with Express Entry so that I can elaborate on it. One can come to Canada by sponsorship. Mm. So if you have a spouse um, in Canada who is a PR or a citizen can sponsor a spouse, a parent who is a PR or a citizen can sponsor a child. Mm. A child can sponsor the parents. So that's sponsorship. Um, we have business investments, so people can come in through investing in business, and through that, they get PR. Um, we have um, study, although people come to study, but there's an avenue by which you can have a path to become a PR. We also have work permits, although it's temporary, people come to Canada to work, there's a path for them to become permanent residents if they choose to. So when it comes to the most popular one, which is the express entry, so it's, there are like three, there are three different types. There is the express entry itself, which is the skilled worker program. Mm -hmm. There is the skilled trade. There is the Canadian experience class. Mm -hmm. So under this, there are also some provincial nominee programs, mm -hmm. which are different. So the federal skilled worker is for people that actually go to school, you know, colleges, university, and they are, Canada has what we call national occupation classification. So every profession has a code. So if you're a teacher, it has a code, your job specification, job titles, what you can do. So under the, um, the federal skill, so the NOC is O, A. The federal skill trades is B. So, the federal, so for the federal skills, we talk of lawyer, accountant, doctors, engineer, teachers, nurses. So that's that. So you have to meet the language, um, mark, experience, um, ability to be able to finance your family. So that is that. Then there's the skill trade, which is for cook, bakers, you know, artisan, oh. those in the technical department, agriculture, truck drivers, and things like that. So that is a skill. That is a trade. And it's just to show that every profession is respected. Mm -hmm. So not everybody has to go to college or university to be respected. So that's why that class is there. So Canadian experience class could have any of this in it. So Canadian experience class could have the federal skilled trade or it could be um, the federal skilled worker as well. But what makes the Canadian experience class different from the world having experience in Canada? So this is a class of people who have worked in Canada and gained experience in Canada. So that is, so for working in Canada, you gain points. For having employment in Canada, you gain points. If you have uh, coming in with Canadian experience class, usually you have a job offer. So you don't have to show proof of funds 
of how much you have in your account. So it's usually an easier route. So you get marks for that. So those that have studied in Canada, for instance, you get marks for studying in Canada, you get marks for the one-year experience you have, you get marks for the work you have. So that has shoot up the point. So um, that is that. Then there's also the provision nominee programs. So the essence of the provision nominee programs is that Immigration is a federal scope in Canada. You know, there are some areas that province is in charge, but immigration is federal. Yeah. But what the federal government did with provision nominee is to allow every province attract people that would boost their economy. Mm -hmm. So each province would decide, oh, at this particular time, these are the professionals we need. Mm -hmm. So they do a program to be able to attract such people. So that's the essence of the provincial nominee program. So it is not even every provincial nominee program that you need to be in the pool, the express entry pool. So let's assume you are a doctor. Um, and for instance, currently in Saskatchewan, there are some provincial nominee programs that once you meet the score, which is 60 expression of interest, they give you the PR, even if you are not in the pool. Oh. Yes. So, and there are some provincial nominee that if you're in the pool, if you get the nomination, um, after you submit your expression of interest, you get 600 points because the express entry is 1,200, right? So once you have 600 points, wow. there is no cutoff that I've ever reached 600 points. And there's sometimes that there are people in the pool that the province themselves pick and tell them, oh, come and invite, I will invite you to apply for the provincial nominee program. So, um, so those are that. And there are some also other federal provincial nominee programs. For instance, there is the Atlantic Pilots, the Atlantic Provinces, Nova Scotia, PEI, New Brunswick, Newfoundland, Labrador. So what the government does there is that they want people to go to those provinces. So it's a federal program, but having a local niche. There is a recent one, the Rural and Northern Atlantic Pilot Program as well. We are separate cities in some provinces, British um, Columbia, Ontario, Manitoba, Alberta, and there's an, there are five of them. So they pick different cities, like in Toronto, we have Thunder Bay, Sunset Mary, Timmy's, and things like that. So, so the idea with that is that they want to develop those small cities. So when you get job in that, so there's a federal component, there's also a local component in all these provincial nominee. Although, unlike the first one I said, there are some that they are just basically the province taking care of it. So once the province nominates you, you get 600 points, you go to the federal. Or the one like in Saskatchewan that you could do directly. But with the pilot program, Atlantic Pilot, or the Northern Rural Scheme, there's a federal component, there's a local component. So when you get job in there, so is that letter of designation that you use to apply to the federal government and you get the PR. There's even a new one in Yukon now, oh, wow. Yukon Community Pilot. So the gov Yukon wants to attract people to them. It's just a few months, I think July or so. Wow, so what they are great. doing there is that this is even very unique. You must have at least two or three employers because what the government wants to do is that Yukon, we know is very cold. People don't go there and the businesses are small. So most of the businesses cannot employ a person full time. So it, this is a work permit stream. So you get a work permit for two years before you use it as a part to apply for PR. Yeah. So what the government does in this instance is to promote the small businesses that need the expertise, mm. you know, of foreign trade professionals. So government says you must get employment from at least two businesses. So you could even get employment from three businesses. So maybe you do 10 hours here, five hours here, six hours there, so that the small businesses are not denied the opportunity of the professional experience that could be open to them. So that's the unique thing. Which And one thing I want to tell um, internationally trained people coming in, lawyers or whatever, um, people always think, oh, I have nothing to give. Mm. Believe you me, we have a lot to give. <laughs> we have a lot to give. That is why the government is ensuring that even local business benefit from what you have to offer. You know, so, so those are the... And, um, the um, CIC, if you go to the government website, all this information is there. Immigration is complicated. If you are patient, mm. you can complete this application yourself. No. But it could be confusing. Yeah. There are lots of documentations in immigration, yeah. forms to fill and all that. So yeah. if you are not sure you can navigate that to get a professional. But the truth is that if you are patient, you pay attention to details, 
you can actually do this yourself and the information is online so one and there are lots of false information as well so one has to be very careful but when you go to the government website itself the cic government website you get all the information and um, you'll be able to navigate where you fit in um, with respect to that. Wow, that was that that was loaded. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of information, a lot of information, and it just made me um realize that there are several ways you know that you can immigrate to Canada. But a lot of people just know express entry. That's it, and it just stopped there. But there are several ways you know people can immigrate uh to Canada. I just want to ask uh, or clarify something with the provincial nominee and um, programs. Is it the requirements for, um, you know, applying for provincial nominee and extra century, are they different or are they, are they, or are they almost the same thing? Okay. It depends on provinces now. So yeah. the requirement for the federal is, so the main thing for the federal is your language, mm -hmm. um, your work experience, mm -hmm. Um, admissibility, definitely, that you have no criminal record, that. Um, the funds that you'll be able to use, and um, I think that's it mm. for the federal. So that is what they assess. So for the different provinces, some provinces have professions they want you mm. to come in. So if you can prove to them, so some provinces would even say the benchmark, the language benchmark they want is maybe four, okay. which is low. So you get the 600 there. Mm -hmm. Some would tell you all we need is a teacher. So once you can show that you're a teacher, you've had experience for maybe a year, mm -hmm. you know, like three years in the federal skill program, you are there. Mm -hmm. Well, another thing is, especially when it comes to skill trade or some certifications, mm -hmm. when there are professions where you need certifications or like in skill trade. Mm -hmm. So the good thing with skill trade is that if you're fortunate to get a job offer, mm -hmm in a place, mm -hmm. you would get a work permit. Okay. So it allows you to come in so that you can now get certified mm. and you now apply for PR. Yeah, I see. Yeah. There are some opportunities that I give you, just like an internationally trained lawyer. Mm. Um, you don't have to be a resident to do the NCA. Yeah. You know? So you could, I, when I was doing my, I had a friend who lived in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, he wrote his exam at the British Embassy, actually, in the UK. Wow. And some always fly to Canada to come and write the exam. So, so that is the same thing too with the skill trade. Sometimes, especially if that profession requires the skill trade. But the truth is that the federal component is different and the provincial component is different. Right. So and it differs from province, you know, because the essence is that the province have a profile of who they want to attract. Mm. So they have to make sure um, they attract the person that is a well fit yeah. for their community. So yeah. that's why. And can you do both applications simultaneously or is it the provincial nominee first before maybe get in the pool? I know you explained that in some provinces, you don't even need to get in the pool once you get it. But for provinces where you need to get in the pool, do you apply for provincial nominee first? You have to be in the pool first. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, you have to be in the pool. It's a, it's a prerequisite. If you are going through the pool, you create your profile in the pool then you go ahead to do expressions of interest. Sometimes the provinces themselves view the profile and they invite you to apply for expression of interest. So it goes both ways, but you must always have the profile created in the pool if that is the route of the PNP. Okay. Honestly, I'm learning so much. And some of these questions, I'm just even asking my own thing because, you know, it's helping me really understand because I never really understood, you know, the provincial nominee process and then expressing you know, why people had to do it. I'm like, why don't you just do the federal board? Now I get the 600 points. Wow. It's a joker card. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> should know it is a joker card. <laughs> would, uh, would up for it. Okay, so we are going to um, wrap up this video very soon, but I'll just ask um, this one question, or this, I'll just ask one more question so that we can um, end the video. Um, this person is asking, what are the benefits um, an immigrant stands to get from the Canadian government? So if I have a PR, and sometimes I ask myself this question, so okay, now I'm a, you know, a permanent resident, what, what benefit do I stand to gain from the Canadian government? Okay, so um, you stand to gain a lot of benefits from the government as a PR, especially in Canada. You know, this COVID season, I remember when my family was my great, like I, I'm a person of faith mm -hmm. and um, I, I, I do things with the direction of God. When my family, when we're coming here, 
we had a leading that is time to come. Mm -hmm. At that time, I was at the peak of my career. I was enjoying my work. My husband was enjoying his work. We have our business. Our children were doing well. And there was recession because we came in 2010, the end of 2010. A lot of people were telling us we're out of our minds, you know, but thank God our parents were people of faith. They were afraid, but they said, if you say God is telling you to go, we'll pray for you. <laughs> my sister had to call me and tell me, are you sure you're making the right decisions? My colleague, you know, everybody was scared for, I said, don't worry, God asks us to go, we know he's there for us, you know? So it's, um, when, when, when you're coming like that, so it's times like this, you look back and you appreciate the type of economy you are in. COVID season, um, a lot of people, even as big as US is, we see what is happening here. But here we have government giving the people the CERB mm. to help them to cushion the effect. You know, this is a system that the doctor, when I first came into Canada, the doctors are always using phone. It's time for your medical. It's almost a year you have not come and it's like, wow, you know, for your physical, <laughs> they actually run after you. When it's time, when you're a particular age, you need to do the pap smear test. They keep writing to you. I have teenagers, children, young adults. There are some particular vaccinations they need to take. They keep writing to them. Nurses go to school to inspect the children's teeth mm. to make sure they have access to it. So whether your family have money or not would not depart, depart them. Yes. You know, they want to make sure everybody have access to be able to make sure their dental eye that is not covered by OE. Mm. There are avenues that the school system makes sure is covered. You know, you have a peace of mind. You can plan. One thing with this economy is that there is no excessive. We pay huge tasks, right? But I, I cherish this system all the time. And I tell people there is no amount of tax I pay that I, I don't grudge paying tax because um, I didn't start working. I've been in Canada for three years. I didn't work. You know, we brought our resources to keep us so that we, I went back to school. My husband went back to school. Our children were in school and all that, you know, because that's always the advantage. But one thing is that for three years, we didn't pay for taxes. For instance, the first year, it was the Welcome Center that did it. We lived in Vaughan. Um, accountants volunteer their time. So if you have an income below a particular amount, they come to the library and they file it for you free. My children were able to do different activities. Canadian Tire, they even give you tax receipts that we used to file. The children, you know, so when are you saying, what can this, you know, this is a system that you plan, you can sleep that you know things work. You can see where your tax dollars are going. You know, they, nowhere is perfect, believe you me. But to a great degree, you put your head high, you do what is right. But at the same time, like I said, we also have a lot to offer this country. Our children are valuable resources to this country. The money, my, my family brought money for three years. We didn't take anything and it kept us. So <laughs> that's what we brought to this economy. Our expertise are skills. Mm -hmm. You know, I volunteer a lot. I volunteer in the shelter. Um, I volunteer um, food bank, my children's school, you know. So we bring a lot of expertise. We bring a lot of, a lot of times when I do some work, when I discuss with some colleagues, they say, oh, Kevin, you know, I never thought of it that way. Because of the training I have, because of my background, I'm able to bring a fresh perspective. So that is what we bring. Yeah. So as internationally trained lawyer, we need to hold our head up high. Yeah. It's a simultaneous, you know, it's a symbiotic relationship. Yes. We bring and we get as well. Yeah. You know, so that is the relation. There is a lot to gain coming to Canada as a country and also as an internationally trained person. Or anybody coming to Canada, you also have um, gifts to bring to the economy so oh, wow. this has been very exciting <laughs> you know this is what i tell a lot of people as well who are asking me oh i'm not i don't have any canadian experience i'm scared to apply for jobs i'm like okay did you work in your home country and you hear people say oh yes i worked as a lawyer with the supreme court for 10 years i worked with the um high court for five years i'm like <laughs> you have experience you know you have yeah. experience you have um you have skills transferable That's skills exactly. so don't be scared to you know transfer those skills into canada you know transfer them into your resume and let people see and know what you have to offer so i like that you really focused on that and you know you you hammered on that a lot 
Ah, so um, <laughs> I don't want this video to end. You know, I like talking and uh, let's yes, yes, yeah, yeah, too. <laughs> <laughs> I like talking. <laughs> talking but, um, <laughs> um, has to come to an end unfortunately thank you so much mrs oduwale for um you know recording this video with us you have offered so much value and so much information that <laughs> you know that i'm sure a lot of people um were or would be happy to to hear about and um if you are looking to immigrate to canada or you are looking um for any um you need to require services in any area of law mrs oduwale works at top market and uh, they are a full -fledged law firm they offer services in almost every area of law so um if you're looking to you know immigrate and and get any other um services please send me an email just reach out to me and i'll be happy to refer you to mrs oduwale you see all these things she has said if you are not a detailed oriented person if you don't pay attention to details you can get it mixed up and you can do the wrong thing miss out some information and that will not be good you know for your application and you don't want that to happen you know so um thank you so much guys for watching this video if you're yet to subscribe kindly subscribe and turn on your notification bell so that you will um get notified whenever i post um a new video also like this video and share this video if you found it very helpful i will see you guys in the next episode of ask more thank you very much for watching and bye